What is up guys, Karma Medic here and welcome back to another dose. Pretty early wake up today, nothing quite like being out of the house at 6.30 in the morning. There are very few people around me. I'm currently on a block called Long Term Conditions and so we're rotating through a bunch of specialties. We're doing things like geriatrics, rheumatology, dermatology, orthopedics and then today I'm on surgery which explains my really early wake up. I don't actually know what I'm doing this morning. I've just been told to show up at a certain place at a certain time at 8 o'clock in the morning for general handover and then I think we're going to get attached to one of the F1s and go do ward rounds and things like that. And if there's anything going on in theaters, you bet I'm gonna be there. So here in the UK, pretty much all COVID-19 restrictions have eased up and you don't actually have to wear a mask in public spaces, but I'm definitely going to still be wearing a mask. I'm not about that no mask life just yet. All right guys, I think that's enough talking from me for now. I'm gonna catch you on the commute. <laughs> pretty long. It takes me about an hour and a half to get into the hospital. On my commute, I like to do three main things. I'm either just on my phone, listening to music, just passing time and trying to wake up in the morning, or if I'm not doing that, script videos for the YouTube channel. I can focus quite a lot when I sit down and I have my iPad open. I put some lo-fi music without any lyrics and I just get to work. And the second thing I like to do is go through past paper questions for medical school. So just keep practicing, make sure I'm up to date on my information and my knowledge. Hopefully <laughs> keep all, this, all of that medical knowledge stuck somewhere in my head. But anyways, yeah, we've got about half an hour on the bus now, so time to get to work. scariest lift I've ever been to. Just listen to the sounds as well. This does not give me comfort. All right guys, so made it to the hospital, got my scrubs and I need to get changed. We haven't exactly got a changing room or a working set of bathrooms up here. So we kind of change in this empty gym that we have here on the ninth floor that is also not in use because of COVID. I think I'm gonna make it in just on time. We've got bedside teaching at 11 in the morning, which is when one of the doctors takes a small group of us around to find specific patients who have really good signs that we can listen to or percuss or palpate or whatever. And that tends to be a really good learning experience because it's just a few of you with one doctor and they've hand-picked patients that are going to be very good for our learning. So we get to take histories from them, examine them, and then, you know, give our differentials to the doctor, report back the patient and discuss the case as a group. And then from three to five, we've got some teaching, afternoon teaching with one of the surgeon consultants here. And I don't actually know what that's on just yet. I should probably check the timetable, but we'll get to that later. I don't really have time now. Got my notepad and my pen. I just like to write at the top what it is I'm doing, what the date is, and then I take notes on the different patients that I see and everything that goes on that I want to look up later on when I get home. And I think that is pretty much it. I'm good to go. Just gonna throw all this stuff in my locker and this is where the real, the real work begins for the day. Let's go. I'll see you guys later. All right, so I've come up to the student area in the hospital. We've got a very lovely view. As you guys can see, we basically just finished surgical ward round. We saw a series of cases all to do with uh, GI issues. So we had some strangulated hernias, bowel obstructions, people recovering from laparoscopic cholecystectomies, pancreatitis, query liver failure. So I was on the general surgical ward round, but the consultant specializes in GI. So that's why we had a lot of GI related patients. So that right there is downtown London. You can see the gherkin, the walkie talkie, and I think the cheese grater in the background. So I'm here with Asif. Um, fellow fourth year medical student. He was with me this morning on the surgical ward round. So what did we get up to? What did we see? All I remember is the guy's catchphrases. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> the consultant was giving us mad wisdom. Eyes can't see, what the brain don't know. What the mind don't know. Yeah. yeah. Better to be a fool, ask a question and be a fool one time than never ask questions and be a fool your whole life. Getting quizzed by him as well. Getting quizzed, yeah. He, he asked a lot of questions. Cause, main causes of pancreatitis. We were, we were okay on that one. We were right on that because of like, you know, I get smashed. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but then, um, causes of poor wound healing. 
that one threw us off quite a bit. The one that threw me was complications of like surgery for like cholecystitis. Oh yeah, uh, lap And he was surgery. like, he told me to go third, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, he was going first. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, now we've got bedside teaching with an F1 doctor. What are we planning to do? Joint examinations? Joint exams, he said. I don't know which ones. Anything you want to say to the, the um, cameras, people watching? Be good, attend. Be good and attend? Yeah. Solid advice. Uh, we just finished our bedside teaching. We're gonna go into the canteen and grab some lunch now while we wait for the afternoon teaching, which may or may not happen. Waiting on an email to let us know if that's gonna go through. It's just gonna grab some food in the meantime and I'll give you guys a tour of the area that we have upstairs. So I just received probably the best picture I could have ever received while on placement. I'll leave a photo of it over here. We have got our new TV, finally. Can't wait to go home and set that up later today. So this is the doctor's mess that we're allowed to use as medical students. It's quite big and spacious. Everything is really outdated. <laughs> we don't use it as often as I guess we would because we have our own student area um, a little bit through there. I'm here with Martin and Amen. there are also two final year medical students here with me. And earlier today we had bedside teaching together. We were practicing examinations on each other. So we're gonna run through some of those now and show you guys what that looks like. <laughs> Yo, I'm exhausted. It's been a long, long day. All right, I'm just gonna get dressed, get on public transport, and head straight home. Let's go. Since there's no one in here, I thought I'd give you guys a quick tour of our student area. It's nothing too big or too crazy. We've just got a couple of computers here, which is kind of useful if you want to get some portfolio work done in your downtime or in the afternoons. Just some lockers over here and more lockers over here. But yeah, that's it. Like I said, nothing crazy. I'm so ready to go home. Afternoon teaching was pretty useful. We were practicing a cardiovascular exam, but instead of doing it all in one go, we did it section by section, which was actually quite helpful because we got to discuss each section in detail and really think through all the different signs that we're looking for. So I do appreciate that. But yeah, I just want to be home. I want to go see my new TV, set it up on the wall, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to hop on transport and see you soon. say two things. First of all, it is absolutely boiling in London. I mean, the hospitals are humid, the streets are humid and hot, the sun is shining very bright. And I don't know, London heat is very different than heat abroad. I feel like the city and the homes are just not built for hot weather here. Anyways, the second thing is that over the last couple of weeks on placement, there have been clinical work experience students in the hospital. So these are students in their final year of high school who are coming into the hospital to gain work experience to see what it's like to be a doctor or a nurse or a PA or something like that. So a whole bunch of these students have recognized me when I'm walking around the wards or having lunch or whatever. And it's honestly been really, really nice to interact with you guys and say hi and hello. But today, <laughs> Today I was going for this afternoon teaching with the registrar, which if you don't know is like quite a senior doctor in the hospital. And one of the clinical work experience students sort of walks by me and just stops right in front of me and stares at my name tag on my lanyard. And she just turns to the registrar in front of a group of other students as well. And is like, is that karma medic? <laughs> just like, <laughs> oh my God. Obviously the registrar is like, what? Who has no idea what's going on. So I then have to explain, oh yeah, like uh, I make YouTube videos about medical school, blah, blah, blah. And the registrar starts quizzing me left, right, and center. Meanwhile, this girl, bless her, she's like, <laughs> I think really nervous. She, her like voice is cracking. It was really, really sweet. Got absolutely nothing bad to say about her, but it was a terribly embarrassing situation. But anyways, if you're watching Michelle, hey, shout out to you. Thanks for stopping to say hi. <laughs> Just thought I'd tell you guys, it was pretty funny to me. All right, I am definitely done with the day. I am going straight home and I'll see you there. All right guys, so this is filmed on the next day from the rest of the vlog, but I wanted to pick up the camera because I had a really great day today on placement. I was in theaters today with the surgery team and I was watching two laparoscopic cholecystectomies, so laparoscopic removal of the gallbladder. And very excitingly, I actually closed three of the incisions. I was doing subcuticular suturing under the guidance of the surgeon, obviously, but it just felt amazing to actually close. I remember the first time I ever closed an incision, which wasn't that long ago, actually. I was like shaking with the tools in my hands. And I mean, to be fair, my hands were really 
covered in blood during that time but still I found them very very slippery my hands were like shaking and I was so 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 nervous but today I felt a lot better and I think that's partially because I was doing it for the second time but also partially because the person who was you know instructing me and I was following was very calm and trusted me and gave me that confidence to go forward I honestly find that very very important when the doctor that you're shadowing sort of believes in you and trusts you it goes a very very long way in giving you that confidence to you know put yourself out there and do these practical skills that you just have to practice and get good at over time sounds really cool also so during the surgery I was like holding the clamp that was holding the gallbladder out of the way I was holding the camera and you know pointing where the surgeons needed to be it was really really a, such a fun time in theaters today and yeah I guess this is just another plus one for the potential of doing surgery in the future anyways just wanted to pop in here and say that and we'll get back to the vlog from yesterday Alright guys, it has arrived. Massive, massive TV, almost as tall as Alexia. <laughs> That's not true. Guys, just so you know, 139 is the size of the TV, not, <laughs> not the box. The box is taller, which means I'm taller. Yeah, yeah, 139 is the size of the TV, right? Can you, you not put it on the bed? Or what? if you do, please, please bring paper back. This has been outside. <laughs> you must put the dirty box onto the bed, onto the new sheets. Honestly, mate. Come on, you gotta be my filmer. Alright, limited movement. Hello. Get this up on the bed. It's recording. Don't you worry your little pea brain. Putting those muscles to work. In case anyone wants to know what TV he got so you don't ask him in the comments like 750 times. <laughs> is this one right here. <laughs> Can you pull the box away, huh? <laughs> I felt like an albatross eagle there with my wingspan. Now let's take the old one off. It's very, it's very similar to the screwdriver. Oh, the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, just chill, fam. Alexia, using her triceps today. Okay, please don't put that on the bed because it's so dusty. Yeah, let's give this a good clean. Alright guys, so since the new TV is almost twice as heavy as the old one and this screw over here in the mount is kind of turning in place which means it's not secure in the wall I've decided that I need to add two more screws one here and one here so a quick montage of that <laughs> Why are you filming me? See how easy that was? No big headache, right? I would have still called the guy Yeah, and you would have paid him 100 euros Get you a handyman Get you a man who can do both <laughs> All right, pretty hot day to decide to do this DIY project, but as you guys can see, two new screws put in place. I'm sure it's gonna hold the TV just fine. Oh my goodness, that's huge! Hey, boy, 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 boy. I, I told him pull the guy. We don't need a guy! All right, Lex, come on, squeeze There's in. There's an app for this where you can get like a task rabbit, where you can like hire a person who knows what they're doing. <laughs> Alright guys, not gonna lie, that took way longer than expected, but it's finally up and ready. I've signed into all of my accounts and it is absolutely huge. Honestly, even though it's really big, I'm actually very happy about that because when me and Nor play video games now, when we sit down to watch lunch, when we sit down to watch dinner, everything is gonna be big and massive and in 4K. I'm really, really happy with it. And alright guys, I think that is it for this vlog. I really hope you've enjoyed coming along with me to another day in medical school. If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to leave a like on it and also subscribe to my channel to see more content from me in the future and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace! Walking and vlogging is, is difficult. <laughs> the joys of being a YouTuber. <laughs>